The Ontario government is delighted because today we are providing BioAmber with a $15 million loan and that is going to attend a multi-million dollar investment by BioAmber right here in the Sarnia era. area. Congratulations so much to BioAmber. Uh, there aren't too many announcements that I make in Ontario through economic development and trade that have me standing in front of a bale of hay. <laughs> so there must be a story here. But let me tell you that Blue, Blue Water Chemicals, subsidiary of BioAmber, will be setting up the world's first commercial scale biosuccinic acid plant. Well, thank you. Obviously, I'm not the, uh, the scientist guy here on, on this side, but more on, on the financing and, and bringing everything together to, to, to get a project there. Mary, thank you very much for the introduction. Minister uh, Patello, as you're leaving politics, you know, after a speech like that, there's always a place in our organization for somebody that can, <laughs> that can make speeches like that on, on that. So thank you very much. And MPP Murray, thank you also well for, for, for your uh, opening comments. Thank you. So um, after a long period of time, uh, BioAmber is very pleased to announce uh, that we have chosen Sarnia as the location of our first commercial bio-based succinic acid plant. So we're, uh, we're delighted to be here. Now, as, as everybody, including myself, when I joined the company, what's succinic acid? It's, it's a you know, common aspect. It, actually, everybody produces it internally in their own body. It's produced naturally uh, in, in people's body on that side. But basically, it's a platform chemical. It's non-hazardous, non-volatile. And in reality, it looks a lot like table salt. So if, if you know what it looks like on that side. Um, and we call it, it is a platform chemical that is used in a wide variety of end products. So from fragrance and cosmetics and, and pharmaceuticals, all the way to polymers, plastics, um, non-corrosive de-icers, which for roads or for airports on the, on the runways, uh, we think there's going to be a dramatic change on that side. End markets, you know, to auto parts is, is a big end market that we think is going to be there. Plastics, PVC, so when we say a platform chemical, we truly mean it has multiple um, applications and I think a lot of times people you know say you know what's it used for these are these are the markets we know today um, and I say you know five years from now there's gonna be applications we haven't even thought of so right now it's about a ten billion dollar market just this aspect here and also going to other things called uh, one four propane dial or BDO which is things for spandex or PBS which would be used for auto parts as well on that side um, so in the initial capacity of this plant will be 17,000 metric tons. It will be commissioned in 2013, so not too far away on that side. And um, with all our work on the marketing and sales side and, and from our plant in France and selling the, 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 the product already out there, we're already planning on doubling capacity by 2014 and also bringing a BDO line, so one four feet and dial. <laughs> So I would say, you know, BioAmber, our goal really is to make the equivalent chemicals that are made through the pet petrochemical route today, we try to make them less expensive with the same or better quality. Um, our process is renewable and sustainable, and uh, not just using renewable feedstocks, but we actually consume CO2 in the process, and, and that, or sequester it. And if you would look today of all the, the carbon sequestering uh, process out there. The only one that really sticks out is you drill a hole in the ground and you pump it underground and then you try to get more oil out of there, which is, which is fine, which is expensive, which is a multi-billions of dollars a project. We actually take CO2 and, and, uh, and it's in, in, the, in the chemical itself, so if you make a piece of plastic, it's sequestered for as long as that plastic's there. Um, a lot of times, you know, companies come and, and have new ideas and, and, and uh, we're probably no different on that. Where we do uh, stand a little bit apart is uh, what we've done in France. We run a 3,000 metric ton facility there. We've proven the technology at large scale. We know it works. We know our cost structure. Um, and it really puts us, you know, what we believe, you know, is uh, well ahead of the rest of the pack globally on that side. Um, this process was really scaled up over the last decade, so it's not something that just happened. We, you know, we've been working on this and, and the predecessor companies for, for well over a decade, and this was really scaled up throughout the world. We used really the best of the world, whether it's from Japan, U.S., France, Canada, wherever, and, and that's really some of these new technologies where they really need to be uh, from the biotech side to the chemical side to the catalyst side. So it's, it's a whole bringing in different people uh, together on that side. Um, so you can imagine 
for a company like BioArm, which a lot of people probably haven't heard of, um, there's a lot of you know, different people to thank to, to get a project of this size off the ground. And I am going to do that in, in a moment. But first, I just want to uh, let you know a little bit on our selection process, why we picked Sarnia, why, why are we here today, what, what did Sarnia offer. We looked at over 100 sites throughout North America for this facility, and uh, you know, we, we narrowed it down, so we were traveling a lot all over the place trying to find the best places. Um, so the feedstock availability, uh, Ontario has some of the highest yielding corn uh, process in North America, some great, and especially the Lambton College areas, I, I believe some of the two or the three most, uh, uh, really the best corn yielding on that side, comparable to any place in Iowa or Nebraska. Um, close to facilities that make glucose, which is really use the corn to make the glucose, uh, high fructose corn syrup, which is great. The logistics here, trying to get our product out afterwards, uh, truck, rail, ship, I think everybody here knows why Sarnia is, is, is really good on that. You go right over the bridge, you can hit you know, 40, 50% of the US market uh, in, a, in a truck, uh, in a dates truck. The underutilized assets, unfortunately Sarnia has had some, you know, some issues with some plants closing, but for us we think it's a great opportunity because it really saves us literally millions of dollars in not building boilers and, and having wastewater treatment and having electricity and redundance and, uh, and, and we think there's going to be a lot of other companies that are going to come up to the same decision we are and our understanding is there's a lot of people that are looking as the word got out that we are, looking, that we are going to be uh, choosing Sarnia on that side. Uh, the strong and knowledgeable workforce, it's, it's hard to build a, a sophisticated plant in the middle of a, a cornfield. I mean, the, the Sarnia, the people that built these facilities, um, that workforce, that uh, in knowledge of safety and how to build and to operate, very important. Um, also brought through the, the college, Lambton College, the universities which are close by. This facility here, um, condemned on that uh, as well, that was a great facility and, and part of our decision making process. We know there will be a knowledge base here for years to come as we continue to, to, to expand as well. Um, the strong government support, no question about it, that does play a, a role um, uh, on that side. So we, we did uh, receive mostly in loans up to $35 million of close to an $80 million facility, which BioAmber will be providing the rest, so a lot of capital coming in. We are a U.S. company, so a lot of foreign direct investment, a lot of foreign direct technology being brought in here. Um, I do have to thank some people in particular, Minister Patella from MEDT and their support in, in that loan was instrumental on that side, so we thank the MEDT uh, for that support. Um, I also want to thank the people at MEDT, uh, special thanks to Ann Waddell who's worked very hard over the last eight months helping us through this process and, and a very strong due diligence process which we are in complete favour um, for any government organisations on that side, so we're, 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 we're great on that. Uh, I would like to acknowledge and, uh, Pat Davidson here as well and her office and uh, Benjamin Martin as well and all the work he did and yourself to help pushing through this again provincially, federally, both, both levels and obviously the local support. Mary McLaughlin who was the first um, supporter I, from Sustainable Chemistry Alliance and, and, um, and putting in a loan, small loan for that and really helps to get that first one over the hump. It's always the hardest to get the first in so he has a very knowledgeable board from Dow and DuPont and people from Lanxis. Uh, who really understand the, you know, from the chemical industry what it's going to mean and uh, how that, that's going to shape the new world going forward. So we, we thank you very much for that, Murray. Mike uh, Bradley, the mayor, and Steve Arnold from the local side, uh, we will be counting on you more and more as we're going through the permitting process. So, uh, you know, I have your no numbers, I've used it, and we'll continue to use it going forward. So, but thank you for your support. Uh, Don McCabe, Ontario Federation of Agriculture. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to think of how this project when you have agriculture together with chemicals, with, with uh, unions, with, you know, there's so many people coming together. So, Don, thank you very much and, and opening doors for, for BioAmber. We very much appreciate that. Sandy Marshall is president of Lanxis and has a vision as well on, on, the, on that site. Uh, so, we're very receptive and, and thankful for, uh, for Lanxis and, and, and Sandy Marshall. Uh, Ray Kern and Steve Pilot from the Sarnia Construction Association. Uh, want to thank them for their support and also understanding, you know, new jobs coming in. And, and so it's 40 full-time jobs and 150 construction jobs. So that's, that's great for, for everybody as well. And again, that's just the initial phase. Um, the, uh, uh, George Millay from the Economic Development who, you know, helped us navigate through some of this process as well. So that's great from the local uh, aspect. And, um, you know, we're just really looking at this as, it's good for Sarnia, it's good for Ontario, it's good for Canada, and really is good for the world at the end of the day on that side. So we're going to be looking to make chemicals a new way, a better way. Um, currently we're in the environmental assessment and the permitting process, so uh, work already has started and we've already engaged people to, to, to do that work. Um, and I guess just in closing, I, I'd like to uh, 
uh, welcome uh, to, to thank everybody for coming here and more importantly we'd like to see everybody turning out at the uh, groundbreaking ceremony and much more importantly at the opening of our plant in 2013. Thank you very much for everybody.